Welcome to Royal Haunts at Paranormal X and part two of the six wives of Henry VIII. Tudor girls learned from experience and Anne Boleyn was no more than a child by today's standards when she accompanied Mary Tudor to France for her marriage to Louis XII. When Louis died, Mary returned to England while Anne remained at the French court. By the time she did return to England as lady-in-waiting to Catherine of Aragon, Anne had adopted the latest French styles, becoming something of a trendsetter, and of course it didn't take long for the king to take an interest. Anne Boleyn is possibly one of the best known of Henry's wives. She toppled the queen and began the onset of religious reform. It's difficult to think that she didn't know what she was doing and manipulating the king, but views are divided, and when all said and done, it was Henry who had the final say. Having Catherine of Aragon placed under house arrest, Anne attempted to talk Henry into having his daughter imprisoned at the Tower of London, but Henry still had a fondness for Mary. When she was taken to Hatfield House to attend to the new Princess Elizabeth, being forced to hand over her jewels and demoted to Lady Mary, she was locked away on the King's visits. Anne Boleyn enjoyed her time as Queen, spending money on dresses and furnishing and decorating the royal residences. But Anne's time ran out, and after three years of marriage, she was out of favour. Having gained posts for family and friends, she also made enemies who were quick to seize the opportunity to remove her, replacing her with the king's new favourite, Jane Seymour. The majority agree that most, if not all, of the charges laid against Anne were fabricated, but Henry wanted to be rid of her, and the barons were prepared to help, especially Thomas Howard, the Duke of Norfolk, who she had insulted. She was beheaded at the Tower of London on the 19th of May, 1536, just over four months after celebrating the death of Catherine of Aragon. It wasn't until after the execution, in which Henry made special arrangements for a swordman to be brought over from France, giving a quick, clean cut, that it was realised no one had thought to provide a coffin. Instead, a box that had contained arrows was used, and she was interred within the tower's chapel in an unmarked area. Anne is just as busy now as when alive, She's reputed to haunt the Tower of London, both with and without her head. Then there are a number of houses that lay claim to her ghost. Very little is known about Anne's early days, including the date of birth, but it is thought she was born at Blickling Hall in Norfolk. On the anniversary of her death, a coach drawn by four headless horses pulls up to the hall, and a headless Anne Boleyn, holding her head beneath her arm, alights and enters the hall. Another place of visitation is Marwell Hall in Hampshire. This was home to the Seymours and where Henry VIII courted Jane. And so Anne Boleyn is said to come here, wishing ill will upon the family and the property. The best known story of Marwell is probably that of the mistletoe bride. On the day of the wedding, the guests played hide and seek. Only the game ended tragically when the bride could not be found. Having hidden herself in a chest at a remote end of the house, the lid closed, locking her inside. Though the guests searched in vain, it was a few years later that the body of the unfortunate bride was discovered. The house is now said to re-enact the event, with the sound of tramping feet of those still searching. Another former family home of the Blins is Eva Castle, which is said to be haunted by the fated Queen, this being a place where she spent her childhood. Having visited Newhall at Boreham in Essex, it belonging to her father, before selling it to Henry, the ghost here is also said to be Hamberlin. The most prominent time of year for the haunting at Rochford Hall at Rochford, also in Essex, is over the Christmas period, with Rochford being another family home of the Blins and there are tales of Sal Church in Norfolk being haunted, as they vary from Anne being interred there with other family members to just her heart. The heart was often removed, but it's doubtful with the execution being followed by such a hasty burial. Once Anne's execution was carried out, a gun was shot, sending a signal for Henry VIII, who quickly rode off to his new conquest, Jane Seymour.